Numerical Computation, Chapter 3, Video 6. In this video, we look at a theorem on smoothness of cubic splines. So the theorem states the following. And let f be a function given that is twice continuously differentiable. And now let s be the natural cubic spline function which interpolates the f here at the knots t0, t1, all the way to tn, lying on the interval from a to b. Then the following holds. If you integrate from a to b, the second derivative of your spline function squared the x, and this is less than and equal to the integral of the second derivative of function f squared dx. And this inequality holds for any function f. So what does this theorem say? What is the meaning of the integral of the second derivative square of a function? Geographically, what does it mean? Maybe from calculus we remember that the second derivative is related to something called curvature. So we know the first derivative is the rate of change of the function. So it's the slope of the graph of the function. And the second derivative is the rate of change of the first derivative. So how the slope of the graph changes, meaning how does the function, the graph of a function, bend? How much does it curve? And therefore, um, the integral of the square of the second derivative is related to the curvature. So the larger the curvature, the more the curve bends, and the less smooth it will be. So if you care about finding a smooth curve going through certain points, you would wish to minimize the curvature. So this theorem actually says, among all functions that go through the knots, go through those set of points, the natural cubic spline is the one that has the smallest curvature Therefore, is the smoothest curve that goes through. So, in a sense that the natural cubic spline would be your best choice if that is your goal, is to find the most smooth curve. Therefore, um, people actually never go beyond cubic spline to go into a piecewise polynomial of degree 4, exactly because of this reason. And by the same argument, that's why the quadratic splines are not so popular, even though they're a bit easier to compute, is exactly because the cubic splines are more desirable. Now let's take a look at how we can prove this nice property. Okay, we start the proof by defining a function which is actually the difference between the f and the s. So it's kind of an error function. So let's call it gx, which is fx minus sx. So since f and the s, they both go through the knots, and then g at ti will clearly be 0, because f at ti equals to s at ti. And now we also know that the second derivative of f will simply equal to s double prime plus g double prime, right? Because f equal to s plus g, so derivative is a linear operator. And then if I want to find out the square of f double prime, I could square the right-hand side here, and then I open it up and I get this expression, s double prime square plus g double prime square plus 2 s double prime g double prime. We now um, take this equation here and we're going to integrate it from a to b. So we can integrate each term 
from A to B. So I have one term, two term, three term, four terms. It's exactly all these four terms being integrated. So here comes an important claim. We claim that the last term here in the previous equation, the integral from A to B as double prime G double prime exactly equals to zero. So what consequence will that claim lead to? We see if the last term here shall be zero, then we can see this term is zero, and uh, we also know that if you square a function, so this will be bigger than or equal to zero, right? And then all these quantities are bigger than or equal to zero, bigger than and equal to zero. So the f double prime integral here must be bigger than this integral, writing it out like that if you neglect this plus term, okay? So, and this is actually exactly what we needed to prove, okay? So we nail down what's needed, that is, to show that our claim holds. Let's look at how we can prove this claim. So we repeat our claim here at the top of the page. So since this is an integral, so I play a trick of using integration by parts. I think what's inside here is actually the following. So I um, do integration by parts and uh, use this relation here. So this integral will be the integral of that. That will equal to the boundary value of this term, which is here, minus the integral of this term, which is here. So what will be the value of the first term? We see that because our condition, the natural cubic spline condition, now gives us the second derivative of s is zero at the two ends. So these two values are zero, which means this expression is zero at a and at b. So the first term vanishes. Now let's look at the second term. Recall that S is a cubic spline, so it's piecewise cubic polynomial. And if you differentiate it three times, what you get in the end is piecewise constant. So for each cell, cell number i from ti to ti plus 1, this S triple derivative of x here is a constant. So let's denote this constant by ci. And now let's see, this last piece here, this integral here, what does it equal to? If this is piecewise constant, then I can break this interval into summing over ti to ti plus 1 and go through i from 0 to n minus 1 of this thing, where this s triple derivative is just ci. And since it's a constant, I could take it out from the integral sum and put it outside. Right? So what I'll be integrating is just g prime. Then by the fundamental theory of calculus, this integral exactly equals to the g value at the two boundary points, at ti plus 1 and ti minus 1. And remember how the g is defined. g is the difference between f and s, where at all the knots ti, g equals to 0. Okay, so you actually have 0 minus 0, so this is 0. So tracing back, I have this 0 and I have this 0, and therefore this is 0, and that's exactly our claim. So we proved our claim, and therefore we proved the theorem. I would like to mention that there are actually some other forms of splines which we did not cover in this course and B splines, for example. So if you're curious, you can go and read some related literatures. So this is the end of the chapter on splines.